Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, everyone. Welcome to church. Amen. 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 Today we have Pastor Jacqueline um, bringing the message. And so I am not going to tarry or hold her up. What I'm going to do is just turn it over to her and let her open us in prayer and continue with the message. But if we can raise our right hand, say Pastor Jacqueline. Pastor Jacqueline. Amen. Amen. So well, first, unmute yourself. That just just do that when, when I'm on. Just unmute. Amen. Amen. Um, Heavenly Father, thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak on your behalf. Mm -hmm. Thank you for allowing the Holy Spirit to speak through me, Lord God, as I deliver the word that you have placed on my heart. Mm -hmm. And you put it there because you, you won't let me leave off of it. So, mm -hmm. so I'm going to keep going until you tell me to move on to something. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, and bless everyone that is here today and everyone mm -hmm. that watched the later. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, so we are still, as you can see from my shirt, <laughs> we are still on Romans 12 and 2. Yeah. Uh, so what I want to do is first recap part one and part two so that I can move on to three because I didn't know there was going to be a three, um, but it is. Amen. So part one was uh, uh, the foundation of renewing your mind what that means, how that looks. Part two was building the structure upon the foundation and, and how Satan can plant seeds of hopelessness and despair, oppression, using a foothold to establish a stronghold in our lives. This third installment of Get Your Mind Right is about the chambers or the compartments of renewing, your renewed mind. Mm -hmm. um, the foundation is built. The framing of the structure is on top of the foundation. Um, the framing for the structure represents everything that's been instilled in you that, that makes you who you are. Everything from your first touch, bonding with your mom or dad, to mm -hmm being told don't touch the stove because it's hot Amen. Um, to the most recent events in your life that have shaped or altered your beliefs, morals, or principles in some way. The framework is the very essence of who you are. So now let's section off the structure um, in, into different rooms. So the structure is your home. And the home is your mind. What you put in your home or what you feed your mind deposits into each corridor, every room, every compartment, every chamber that you have created. As you create each room in your home, you're going to pick out the colors of the walls, the flooring, furniture that goes into each room. You're going to decorate it according to your taste. So as the drywall goes up, the wall begins to create a barrier. And the barrier is there to protect the things inside your home, inside your mind. You now have your outer walls. And then the inner walls is, is the drywall that goes up. That helps to protect you from the storms of life, undesirable threats, unknown threats, and sometimes protection from yourself. Mm. In between the outer walls and the inner wall is insulation. The insulation represents all of the prayers you've prayed over your lifetime with a humble heart. The more prayers, the more you seek the Lord, the more deliberate your intentions are for knowing Jesus intimately. Amen. The more insulation you have between the outer wall and the inner wall. Mm -hmm. The more protection you build up, the more protection you have against the schemes of the devil. So how is your prayer life? 
First Thessalonians 5 and 17 says, pray without ceasing. Are the walls of your mind or the walls around your life, your relationships, your physical health, your financial health, are they well insulated through prayer? Or are some of your rooms in your home colder than others for a lack of insulation or lukewarm prayer life? Renewing your mind will feed the prayer line. Once you get your mind right, you will want to spend more time with the Lord than you ever have in your past. Your eyes will be opened with a clear lens and you'll begin to see your life through his eyes and he will reveal more of the plans he has for your life. So let's go back to designing the building, this, this ideal home of our renewed minds. So let's add in the electrical wiring. Um, the electrical wiring, without that, we're all lost. In fact, we're upset because we can't use a computer. We can't, um, we can't recharge phones. We, can't cook in some instances, or you certainly can't microwave. But if you haven't guessed it, the electrical wiring in, in your home is the blood of the lamb. He is your electrical resource and electricity is everything. So you have to have that or the house, the home just, it just, you know, why are you there? So for, the most, for, for most of us, electricity is just as important as the insulation in between the exterior and interior walls. That's exactly how Jesus wants you to see him. Absolutely necessary, critically important, essential, urgently significant. Apart from him, you can do nothing. John 15 and 5, I am the vine, you are the branch. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. The blood of Jesus is flowing throughout your home and it electrifies the prayers you pray that makes that insulation impenetrable. So let's add some windows now. And they say your eyes are the windows to your soul. The eye is the lamp of your body. If, if your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. That's Matthew 6, 22 and 23. What you allow to penetrate your soul determines if sunshine is allowed in those windows or darkness. God intended for your whole body to be filled with light. Let's add the door. The door is the entrance and exit into your home. It's the shield of faith that allows you to come and go knowing you are covered, blocking all the fiery darts of the enemy. It too provides protection from outside threats. And finally, let's add the roof. If we were building an ordinary house, the roof would have been added um, <laughs> early on in the construction, but we're not building an ordinary house. We're building something extraordinary, creating a renewed mind, a description of the reinforced protection for your thoughts that occupy your mind. Together, the roof, the walls, the insulation, they all represent God's protecting covering to keep out all of the elements from outside forces, seen and unseen, known and unknown, over your life, throughout time, age, past, present, and future to infinity, from beginning across eternity, from season to season, above and below, and against every dimensional access point. Every component of your life is covered by the grace, the mercy, and the power 
of God. Okay, so now that our house is built, home is built, because I don't want to call it a house. We live in a house. Home is here. So it's built. It's a solid structure of peace, love, and a sound mind. We used high-end quality materials to build it because our God only wants the best for us. And he will give you his best freely and abundantly if you surrender yourself over to him. So who likes decorating? Let's see how your accessories and adornments factor into this perfect structure, your home, your mind that God created for you. But remember, this home was created with a renewed mind, according to Romans 12 and 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You need to be careful what you bring into your home. Get your mind right before you get excited about decorating and accessorizing your home. Although the structural integrity of your home is perfect by his design, there are forces out there that wants to tear it down, leaving you out on the streets, hopeless and helpless. Because the enemy does not want you happy and he doesn't want you whole. He certainly doesn't want you to have an intimate relationship with Jesus. So anything the devil can do to set that on fire or any other destructive force to destroy your home, he will do it. So I issue this caution. Be careful not to adorn your walls with thoughts of doubt and fear or accessorize your bed with visual images of lustful, perverse acts. Be careful that you don't paint your walls with colors of hate, bitterness, and unforgiveness. The last thing you want is for the walls that was designed to provide protection for you to come crumbling down from an explosive episode of anger, rage, or jealousy. Be careful not to put idols on top of your dresser. Those things that have earthly value, but have no value to contribute to your salvation or your heavenly resting place. Matthew 6, 19 through 21. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be careful what people give you and what you hold on to, especially people you don't know well. Be careful what you allow to breach your home's perimeter because you can literally escort the enemy into your home and not even know it. It's, and it's because of that that I, I don't accept gifts from people I don't know. Um, I had an experience. <laughs> it was actually kind of, kind of comical because I was in the store with the scented lotions and body wash and all that. And this lady offered a 30% off coupon. And I was hesitant to take it. But that's, that's just me. So it may not go to that extreme. But just be careful on what you allow into your home because people are not always genuine and have your best interests at heart. Be careful that you don't select a beautiful plush carpet saturated in sadness, despair, and depression. Be careful that your walk-in closet doesn't have articles of clothing hanging that represent self-hate or pants or leggings of self-sabotage, devaluing yourself by wearing a blouse that plunge all the way down to your navel or a skirt that you know 
does not adequately cover your treasure box. A gift God gave you, not for everyone to visit, see, and play with. Be careful when you put that 75 inch flat screen TV in the room of your choice, what you allow to be seen on that TV. Be careful what you feed your mind. Everything is not for you to watch. What images are you, or suggestions are you allowing to penetrate the window of your soul? The titles alone is like a flashing red light with a, a yellow caution light right next to it. Can you honestly say you do not know the difference in what's godly and what's not? I have never understood why people pay money to go to horror movies. Mm -hmm. uh, because I, I feel we have enough of that in our real life. So I certainly don't see the need to go pay somebody as an escape to, to go be scared. I don't, I don't get it and I don't need to get it. I don't have to, I'm just not going to do it. If God specifically stated, he did not give us a spirit of fear, why would we allow it knowing the spirit comes from the enemy? Know that the walls are there to protect and contain what's inside your home. If you're feeding your mind fruits of the enemy, it's also being contained in your home. This also includes music. Uh, just because it says it's Christian music doesn't make it Christian music. I was on a short road trip with uh, someone this week and they were playing Christian music until I started listening to the, the lyrics of the song and the guy was saying, God don't make mistakes, but what about me? And I was like, what are you listening to? So I revoked her DJ privileges. She, she had to change stuff. The last caution I wanna share with you is probably the most significant because you, ex you have exclusive control over it and that's your mouth. Be careful not to speak death over your life. Mm. This one is a close relative to self-hate, self-sabotage, self-righteousness, self-pity, self-condemnation, selfishness, self-loathing. Did you know that self-loathing is created when in, from an early trauma that has been suppressed and buried into the subconscious mind in, instead of being confronted or dealt with or healed? That trauma could take any form of feelings of in inadequacy, whether that's real, suggested, or imagined. The reason there is a self in front of those descriptive words is because it's referring to your own voice, your own thoughts. As I stated in the first installment of Get Your Mind Right, everything begins with a thought. Your thought process is so, so important. Have you ever said to yourself or to someone else or someone said it to you? And, and before I speak these phrases out loud, I have a declaration. <laughs> and this is my declaration. This is for the edification of the mind and mouth of those who speak these phrases. By no means am I claiming or attaching these phrases to me or anyone else because words have power. So I'm diffusing and arresting that power of these phrases now in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. First, yeah. you are stupid. I died laughing. I'm lazy. I don't care. I am such an idiot. I'm worthless. 
I'm not good enough. Nobody loves me. These are some bad kids. I wish I was dead. I hate you. You make me sick. Go to hell. I wish I was smart. I don't belong here and I don't deserve to be here. I can't believe I did that. I can't wait to get away from you. And someone says that they're gonna do something bad to you and, and this is your response. I wish they would. I rebuked Bind and cast out all of those phrases that I just stated, because I, again, I'm not claiming them for me, and I'm certainly not going to project them on anybody else. But I need you to just think about some of these phrases that we just use loosely without really thinking about it. For example, I died laughing. What if you did? What if what you spoke out your mouth in that very next second it happened? Isn't it better to speak life over yourself than death? I, the weight of just saying that those, I, I can just feel that. Ephesians 4 and 29, Passion Translation says, and never let ugly or hateful words come from your mouth. But instead, let your words become beautiful gifts that encourage others. Do this by speaking words of grace to help them. This is at least one room in your house that has a mirror. Why? Why is a mirror important? It, it allows you to see your physical self, but it also allows you to go deeper if you are willing to see the full reflection. Seeing yourself fully through reflection creates a process where you are forced to take an inward look, critiquing and finally, hopefully, making choices that will move you in a forward direction. At some point today, I want you to look in the mirror and ask yourself, do I see myself the way God sees me? Do I even know how God sees me? Are my behaviors in alignment with his will? If they're not, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you to him for correction. Ask him to show you the image he sees. Ask him to reshape your thought processes that allow spiritual growth in your renewed mind and your newly renovated home. A peace of mind is a beautiful thing. It's a place of rest, a place of refuge. You can grab your Bible with your pajamas and, and go on an adventure. And I promise you, it'll be the best story you've ever read or go for a walk and allow the beauty of this world to penetrate your soul through your spiritual eyes, the window to your soul. Beloved, get your mind right. Do not put it off. It's a work. It takes time. It takes training. It takes discipline. Get your mind right so that you can have a mind-filled home of divine peace and protection. Thank you. Amen. 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 Excellent. Amen. 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 
I want to do something a little bit different today um, because of that message. Typically, we just open up for comments and, and anything um, that we may have to say to the pastor who is who has delivered the message, but I want to do something a little different. So the first thing I'd like to do is I noticed that we have a visitor today, and I would like uh, Lady Sue to give a welcome. I do not want to mess up your name. I'm going to say Jemiah Yell. Jemiah Yell. Is that, is Hello. that, what I'm is Jamie it? Yell. Jamie Yell. Jamie Yell. Okay. Hi everybody. So it's so good to have you. I want to have um, Lady Sue give you a proper welcome and then let you give a response. Okay, Jamie Yell, thank you so much for coming. Welcome. It's really lovely to have you. Um, it's uh, great that you found us and I hope that you will enjoy the evening with us and I'd just like to say a very big warm welcome to you um, from us in the UK and our brothers and sisters in the US and Canada and anywhere else where everybody is. <laughs> <laughs> amen, 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 amen. Would you like to tell us anything about yourself or you don't have to, but we'd certainly like to give you an opportunity. Um, well, I got saved three years ago. Amen. Yeah, just growing in, in Christ and praise God. You know, just thankful for the blood of Jesus, you Amen. know, grace that covered me every moment of the day. And I'm um, just still trying to have the thirst to continue to grow closer to God. So Hallelujah. Thankful for that. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And it Amen. sounds like you are at this point, you know, I'm, I'm in a different age bracket now, and it just sounds like you are a young woman on the move. And I just praise God for that. Amen. The enemy wants to take our people young. Amen. So he has so many years, but it sounds like you took that power back from him and decided you want to yeah. live the majority of your life with Christ. And so we praise God for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yep, just turned 32. Uh, Amen. Amen. Um, Amen. I don't have a church home right now, but you know, that's why I'm on here. So Amen. Well, we always say that the first time you come, you're a visitor. Next time you come, you're home. So you have a home here um, with us. Relax. Feel free to say what you want to say. Comment. Do whatever. Because we've decided we're going to stay in this format because we've let, met people all over the world. So you are more than welcome um, to, to be here. Amen. Feel Thank welcome. You know. know that we want you. We love you. And you are needed here. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 And Sister Olivia is very close to um, your age. So Sister Olivia, can you just say hello? And then, you know, maybe you guys can just message on Meetup. And then you, I think it's what, just a couple years apart. No, I'll be 32 in a few weeks. Okay. So <laughs> Happy early birthday. Amen. Amen. Very good. <laughs> so that's wonderful. That's Amen. wonderful. We've been praying for young people to come. Amen. It takes Amen. young people to um, be that next generation. We, the, the those of us that are a little older, are lay the foundation, and then our young people have to take over. So we're praying for young people. Amen. So again, you are welcome and wanted here and needed here. Amen. We are all a part of the body. And so we all have our own function and we need more body parts. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> that's you fraser <laughs> amen to carry out the function of the kingdom of god amen? amen amen and um since um sister mentioned birthday and we have sister olivia well we know um sister olivia is coming up because we're birthday twins but we just had a birthday that passed and that was pastor Jacqueline. so if we can take a minute to say happy birthday to you amen Happy belated birthday, and we celebrate you, and we're so glad that we can share another birthday with you. This is our second birthday we've been able to share with you. So happy, happy, happy birthday to you. Amen? And many more. Amen. Amen. I don't, now, Brother Frazier said happy 21st. I was going to say 12 since she's got the 12, so we've got the numbers. <laughs> At least make me well, legal. Go get the Lord. At least legal. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So we praise God for you. 
and that we're able to share birthdays. Amen. And this is the Amen. second of many. Amen. That we will share with you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The next thing I would like to do. Um, we all know that this was a, a, a wonderful message, a wonderful series. And, you know, um, because Sister Jacqueline ministers once a month, we may get a fourth. We don't know whatever God is going to do. He's <laughs> going to do. Amen. Mm-hmm. We have no control over that. We give him all our ta- autonomy. So we thank him um, for giving her that message. And we thank her for being obedient and delivering that message. What I would like to do as we go into our communion time, um, typically we turn off the recording before we go into communion and don't have that um, available to those who are watching on social media and that. But I want to leave it on this time because what I would like to do um, in accordance to the message that was just delivered, God has his way of putting things together in ways that we can never even fathom. Today, I was led to put this shirt on, and this was my father-in-law's shirt. And so my thinking was, oh, I got on a shirt that was my father-in-law's, and Pastor DeMott has on a shirt that was my father-in-law's, his dad. Amen? And so I said, oh, this is so cute. We have our little, you know, married couple have our little (laughs) pops. We call them pops. Have pops shirts on. Amen? Mm -hmm. But what I looked at, I recorded two Daily Bible Bites before we got on today. And so um, both of them had to do um, in some way, shape or form with positive talk and speaking to our spirits. And I talked about putting your name in the message. We did Psalm 91 and um, Joshua chapter one as we move in chronological order. And so it just seemed pertinent that I had this shirt on and I wasn't quite thinking about it. But if you see, it's it's a, an American shirt, which, you know, I don't, you don't see me often in, you know, that kind of patriotic um, kind of state because we are God's people first and foremost. But the only thing you can see on here is home of the brave. And mm-hmm. now I understand why I was led to put it on. I've been through some stuff emotionally this week, but home of the brave as Pastor Jacqueline spoke about. I'm going to keep speaking this to myself. Home of the brave. Home of the brave. Amen. There is no wimp in me. There is no wimp in us. There is no, you know, um, scaredy cats, if you want to call it that way. Home of the brave. So what I'd like us to do as we go into communion, you know, each week we put bring closure to something that we should not be doing, not be saying, not um, not be acting out. Amen. Mm-hmm. We bring closure to it because when when God, when Christ, I'm sorry, was in that upper room with his disciples, he brought closure to his ministry on earth, but he brought closure to that um, separation between us and God, us and the holies of holies, and we no longer had that separation. So today I want to bring closure to any self-doubt, um, any Um, negative self-talk, anything that we have gone through. And I would like to, according to, uh, in accordance with the message that we just heard, speak something that you are home, that's in your home. Amen. So I started with home of the brave. Amen. So speak about home. What is, what are you? Speak a a characteristic that you're going to hold on to that you're going to remember when you wake up in the morning, remember when you go to sleep at night. And we're going to declare that now. Amen. Declare it and decree it in Jesus name. Amen. No longer speaking negatively. Even, you know, some people laugh because you can see it on a lot of my social media. When I say that I love someone, I say I love you to life. Because a lot of times, like um, Pastor Jacqueline Jacqueline says, we say here, oh, I love you to death. And, And about, gosh, about 20 years ago, it was like, this is just grim. And I started saying, I love you to life. And people would laugh. Oh, that's so funny. That's so cute. I'm dead serious. Oh, see, I said, I'm dead serious. <laughs> you see that? Yeah. I am absolutely yeah. positively serious. <laughs> I'm, afraid, I'm, afraid right it, I'm afraid it's our English language is riddled with it. Yeah. It is. And like he just said, I'm afraid. I, I'm afraid to start out with that. So we have to really be conscious of what is coming out of our mouth. Amen. Because we can but put but us, yeah. But it, whenever you say, well, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. It just came out. And it's not anything that we, we don't think it's negatively of that at all. I think we just English, understand it. Yeah. I think the English language is actually so, um, there's so few words in it 
that when we say certain words, we don't actually mean what it means. We don't, but the thing is, is that the English language has more words and more multiple meanings for words than any other language. Yes. Than any other language, wow. yeah. So it's like, we're not limited in what we can say. We just choose the wrong words and we don't mean harm in it at all. We don't mean any harm. It's no. just, it just comes out because we hear it as soon as we can hear, right? As soon as we start listening to the language, we hear these things. And, and a lot of things are funny. We take negatives and make them funny mm -hmm. when they're not because we have to speak life. We speak life. You're going to live. Amen. And I'm not giving that message over again because it has been delivered and it's been, <laughs> been delivered more than adequately. Amen. So this is what I'd like us to do as we go into our communion. We're going to each speak life. Amen. To our, our home, our mind, our temple, speak life. And this is something, speak something that maybe another of us can grab on to it. Maybe we can make our own Mount Olive affirmation out of all of them. We can do anything. Pastor Jacqueline talked about those bookmarks. Maybe we can put these things on a bookmark and then somebody can have it who typically speaks negatively and doesn't even realize it. And that's a way to change that language, change the ideology. Amen. So I started with home of the brave. And I'm going to take my communion. Home of the brave. Okay. Thank you. Whoever wants to go next, say it. Take your communion. Amen. Mm -hmm. Bring closure to home. any other negativity. Home of the faithful. Home of the faithful. Hallelujah. <laughs> You're just taking mine. <laughs> Do I have mine? <laughs> Home, home of the fearless. Home, home of, of the, the fearless. fearless. Hallelujah. Amen. Home of the warrior. Home of the warrior. Amen. And take your communion. Amen. Hallelujah. Anyone else or whoever wants to go next, we're all going to go. Home of the overcomers. Home of the overcomers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Home of the forgivers. Home of the forgivers. Amen. 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 Sister Olivia, do you have anything? Sister Jamiel, is it J Jam Jamiel? Jamiel. Am I, I'm still messing it up. I apologize. No, that's correct. It's Jamiel. Jamiel. Okay. Jamiel. Jamiel. Mm -hmm. She's from Michigan. Yes, Michigan, yes. our home. Yes. Yep. Amen. Um, God is a deliverer. So, home of the deliverance. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Home of deliverance. Amen. And last but certainly not least, those of you that are seeing the angel L that don't know, that's um, Pastor Jacqueline's other um, log on or computer um, Zoom <laughs> account. <laughs> And then, so we have one more. Sister Mom, Mom is on there. I'll see if she wants oh, to. Okay. Home of the healed. Oh, home of the healed. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Lovely. Amen. Amen. And Pastor Jacqueline is checking with her mom. And I think this is something neat that we can, you know, write out and we can have, you know, we can put it on the website, you know, put make, put it in the bookmarks, whatever, jot it down. So we have it in our words, uh, in our sword, our word of God, amen, the Bible, we can have it in there. And then anytime. Sorry, sorry, Bishop. I think, I think her mom's about to say something. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Home of the books. Home of the blessed. Amen. Amen. Home of the blessed. Amen. 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 Praise God. So anytime we can't think of the word, sometimes we don't have the words that can that can come out, but we have these. So we can always revert to this video when we post out. It'll be on your YouTube this evening. If you noticed, I did a lot of posting. <laughs> <laughs> and updated our channel so it'll be on youtube this evening you can just put this on and we speak life amen we speak life this is our home she said it best and we got to get our home right 
Yeah. I wrote a play many years ago that we performed. I, I just wrote it to perform in our church for African American History Month one year. This is probably my word. I think this was probably two. No, 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 no. This was 1990. Seven, I believe 1997. And then other churches, there were people who were there from other churches um, who came because we made it a big event. And from that one performance, churches around um, the city and the metro area, Metro Detroit, um, started asking us to perform that play. And it was called Get Your House in Order. Hmm. And um, it was the same thing, Get Your House in Order. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we've got to do that, get our house, get our home in order. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So we thank you so much for this message. And I am going to call on Pastor Jacqueline again to close us out. Amen. Well, I want to make two, a couple of announcements, mm -hmm. uh, if I may. Amen. Let's see what it was about. Oh, so <clears throat> excuse me. beginning October 5th, I'll be hosting a Bible study um, around this topic of get your mind right. Amen. So um, Get Your Mind Right actually came from a movie I watched called The Deliverance of Amy Stronghold. And to, to participate in the Bible study, you, you will need to watch the movie. So we'll arrange some way for that to happen. Um, let's see. Oh, oh, it's in the movie. Uh, Jesus spoke to Amy Stronghold on two occasions and told her to renew her mind. Uh, and so it, after questioning what that meant, then I, you know, did research and here we are on in, in this third installment of Get Your Mind Right. So Tuesday, October 5th, uh, 7 p.m., we'll start that Bible study. And also, I forgot to give you a little bit of good news. I'm going to host an in-person one with us starting Tuesday at um, the conference in the conference room at the clubhouse. So the invitation is gone out to everyone. So hopefully we will have some more members at our Bible study. Um, uh, 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 oh, t-shirts. So this is a sample. Um, my niece who's doing the printing of these, she sent them to me so that I could, you know, kind of feel the fabric and see what I wanted to pick out. So uh, they should be coming to those who've ordered them fairly soon. Um, and if you didn't get one or you want to order one, this isn't the only one. I'll post the uh, t-shirts on our Facebook page and you can, you know, choose whichever design you want and the whatever color you want and we'll make sure that you get it. Um, and I think that's, that's it. Um, yeah. And now I do have one more announcement. I forgot tomorrow is um, Blockbuster Bible study. Oh yeah. So we'll have that tomorrow at 3 PM. And um, <laughs> brother Frazier said, maybe do his t his book on a t-shirt. Amen. But we do want to um, support brother Frazier as well. Yes. He put um, the cover of the book behind him on his background last week. But if you go to Frazier Kennedy, just Put Fraser Kennedy in the search on Amazon and his book will come up there. So we want to support our own. Amen. Okay. Here it is right there. The invasion of daddy. Long there, yeah. So we want to support. Amen. And yeah. so his is over there. And then um, Pastor Jacqueline. Amen. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And so again, Blockbuster Bible Studies tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And Brother Frazier, tell us the name again of the movie. Sunshine and Leaf. Sunshine, Sunshine on Leaf. I never can not remember Leaf. I've got the movie. I was able to get it. And so we watch it together um, for our visitor. We watch a movie together and then we do an impromptu Bible study. Um, on that that movie, not anything formal. It's just that we do a, a mainstream movie because we can see God and we can see the word of God in anything. And so Sunshine on Leap is a movie out of. 
Even then, the podcast. <laughs> He's thinking on Pastor Jimmy about the pot about a podcast. But we're going to we take the amen. We take the mainstream movie, and Sunshine on Leith is a movie out of Scotland. Amen. And I praise God that we are global at this point. That we are. Um, international i guess i should say not global global is every well let's speak it we are global, we are global. Right. <laughs> uk and united states and canada to start and then we are growing and growing amen 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 so that's again tomorrow at 3 p.m eastern standard time and then as far as the movie um i start my class this tuesday the 21st september 21st so if you i don't know what the pastors have planned um for the 21st and the following week. But if you want to do it one of those weeks and show the, um, because we have the 21st, yeah, the 21st, then the 28th, and then the following week would be the 5th. So yes. if you have not arranged anything, you can choose one of those. And we do have the movie um, yeah. from Amazon. So, okay. Okay. All so, right. and, and I'm out of this. So you guys can discuss that on Wednesday and do what you do. Amen. Okay. But I will be, um, I have a, a class that I'm taking, um, what I've been taking classes through Yale to continue uh, my biblical, um, it's, I guess you can call it biblical continuing studies. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Cause we should always do that. Always as a, a former classroom teacher, we always continued our education. And then I, I'm a real estate, I have my real estate license as well. And I've got to do every year continuing education. So it doesn't stop. So we have to do the same thing for our, um, spiritual Yes. Um, education as well. So I have a, a class that um, I take that I start and I believe it's the entire month of goes through the entire month of October, I do believe. So the pastors will be taking over um, as I'm not there. And it is at two Tuesday at 7pm Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> so <laughs> right during our class, the, right during our Bible study, but our pastors are efficient, amen, and effective and they've got it covered. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So now I'm going to turn it back over to Pastor Jack and ask her to close us out and give the benediction. If, is there anything else or all hearts and minds clear? Just wanted to say, Pastor Jacqueline, that's absolutely great. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Really and uh, when you said about on. what came on with them when you were saying about the mirror, about the reflection, mm -hmm. and what came to mind was it's how we what we see in the mirror is how others see us as well. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 a, it's it's how you it's how the world and how God sees us, but also how the world sees us. So mm -hmm. it's it's important to know what we look what we're actually looking at. Right, right, absolutely. Mm. Amen. Thank you. It was good. Excellent message. Excellent. I love your whole series of, you know, getting your mind right. Because, you know, without a strong mind, mm -hmm. you know, where's your your whole life going to? So it was excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I, I was amazed that this one little scripture mm -hmm. has produced three sermons now, and they all have been different. And so I don't know if there will be a fourth. I, he'll let me know because <laughs> I thought I was done it too. <laughs> yeah. so, okay. So um, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to hear your word and allowing your word to penetrate our hearts and our minds. Lord, I ask that you bless every believer, everyone who is here today, Lord, go into their homes, their hearts, their minds, whatever it is that they need, Lord. We ask that you supply it because you are the supplier. You are the provider. You are Jehovah Jireh. And I thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done for us, that you're doing, things we don't even know that that's yet to come. And we just thank you when we bless you and praise you and glorify you, Lord. We're just so thankful. Just thankful, Jesus. I ask that as, as this these our videos and our Bible bites and whatever we put on social media, Lord, that it reaches those hearts and minds and that the seed is planted, that they start to make a change, that they start to seek you and ask for your assistance in making that change. It's in Jesus' name that I ask these things. Amen. 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 
everyone. We hope to see you tomorrow, amen, for our Blockbuster um, Bible study or our Bible study coming up Tuesday. Um, what's next? Wellness ministry, Thursday at 2 p.m., prayer meeting, Friday at 5 p.m., <laughs> Amen. And we'll be back here on Saturday where Pastor Jimmy will be giving the message next week. Amen. Amen. All right. Bye bye. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye-bye. Bye bye. 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 Bye